Hi, I'm Cinnamon Cooney, the Art Sherpa. And one of the number one questions I get asked from beginning artists in acrylic is how they can paint their dogs. And then in that question, all about how do I paint my beautiful, loving, amazing puppers is how do I paint black fur? Black fur and white fur are really hard for people to get their heads wrapped around, but are actually kind of simple to do if you understand a few things. And in this video, I am going to really break down in a fun and simple way the tools, the tips, the tricks, the techniques, the color mixes, everything you need to be able to paint your beautiful black furred companion today. So get your Fido friend sitting next to you with studio safety, of course, and come right back here with all your tools because I'm going to show you how easy it is to actually paint black fur today. No kidding. For real. Come on. All right, the first thing that you have to figure out when you're painting black fur is what kind of black fur is it? Is it blue black fur or is it brown black fur? That's right, black furs come in a couple of undercolors, a sort of basic hue that is hidden within the fur and really changes how it behaves. Now, blue black fur tends to be very deep, very dark and have a high shine reflection whereas the brown black furs tend to be just a little more matte and soft. Today, I'm gonna cover blue black fur, which is the first challenging one. Why am I breaking it up? Probably because I'm gonna have another tip coming up with brown black fur, so be sure and hit that subscribe button when you're ready to see that one. When I'm painting dark fur, especially blue black fur, I wanna have at least three core values. I wanna have a dark value, a middle value, and a light value. For the colors, the clue being blue black fur, I have all terrain blue, that's the blue I'm gonna use in my blue black, and I like this one because it's very neutral and it keeps the colors and highlights gray. This is Mars black and this is titanium white. Don't freak out if you have a different blue or black, they'll just be slightly different changes in the hue, but not substantial enough to ruin your painting or your experience. The first thing I'm gonna do is take something called an artist knife, and I'm gonna pull out one part black to just less than one part blue. What is one part? It's whatever you scoop away, you want kind of equal amounts to. I'm gonna incorporate them together like this, and this is going to be my darkest value. Then I'm gonna come here and grab a smidge, well, a little more than a smidge, about this much white, and we're gonna make a middle gray. Now, the middle gray will have a slightly blue bias to it, and when we do the brown black fur tip, which we'll probably do on a longer fur, um, you'll see how those different it are so, like, same, but super different. It's really weird, but you'll love it. All right. So now we have a dark, a metal. I'm gonna take some of this here and I'm going to mix a lot more white to it. Okay, so now you've got those. But on top of that, you'll make about six more with the brush because you'll be able to mix a little bit of this lighter gray with your white to create your brighter highlights. You can always add blue in where you feel a blue cast is necessary, and you can add more of your black in when it's time to deepen in the deep fur shadow. But if you can get these three, and sometimes even a lighter one of this, um, I'll sometimes go into that and get an even lighter. But if you do do the fourth gray, be sure that you put out right, a little more white so that you have uh, that extra. Now you'll see in my fur basics that I switch for my brightest white highlight to my fluid acrylic, to my fluid acrylic. And I really love my fluid acrylic because it's very pigmented. So I'll put this out right here because you're gonna see this in the next part. Now I'll never paint it just pure white. I'll always use this gray to tone it, but that's just the basics of the color mixing of blue black fur. There are some really great tools that you might not know about that make painting fur a great enjoyment. When I paint today's fur, you're going to see me create a smooth and even background with a bright. You might expect that. This is just a synthetic bright. This one happens to be a number 26 on a short handle, but paint brush sizes are not universal. 
So it's really about a one inch cloth. You just want something to paint in solid fields. Now, as soon as I get into the fur, I go into what's known as a hog bristle braid. This means that the brush is made of hog bristles, natural bristles, which is very scruffy and rough. And it gives me the beginnings of that rough fur texture. Even as I find the direction or the flow that I need to go, I like to have a hog to begin that because the ends of it will leave that rough texture. The other tool you're going to see me using is a grass comb. Um, this is a filbert grass comb. It is different than a rake. Um, and it's important not to mix them up. A rake looks like this and a grass comb looks like this. This will give you a better hair texture. All right, so there's the grass comb. You will also see me use a small fan with a hog bristle. This is really a terrific tool to have in your paint bucket if you're painting your pets. It does a good hair texture. It does what you need. I love it. This is a number two Silverstone. It's a good brush. And then I like to have a little detail round um, so I can do fine hair work when I want to put in those final details. It's great to have an artist knife to mix the colors together. And this is a pipette so I can drip an exact amount of clean water to thin my heavy bodied paint, especially if I don't have that fill, uh, fluid paint. Now, guess what we're going to do next? I'm going to show you the techniques you have to know to make these brushes be masterful in your fur canvas. Let's really quick look at the types of brush strokes we do with these brushes because the way we do the stroke and the way we load the brush can impact the result. I am going to do this on black paper so you can really see it. I'm going to use my lighter paint. Now, I don't have a lot of water on this bright. This is the hog bright. And I'm going to brush this out lightly. Notice I'm not pressing down. And that gives me this curved and finished edge. I can do it on the edge there as well to get some control. You're going to want to make curve and kind of S strokes when you're doing fur. This would be a little tough here because it's a sharp edge. And you always want a feathered edge when you're doing fur. You can see me coming back that way. Curves, S's and little flares. Not too much pressure. You ready for the next brush? The next brush we're going to talk about is the grass comb. I'm going to get my fluid on here because that will demonstrate the grass comb really, really well. The grass comb works kind of like what you might expect, but it gives you the nicest hair effect. So if you have to go over an area, creating a lot of layers that feel like hair, the comb will do that. It's best to do your hair brush strokes with a bit of curve or personality to them. And remember that the comb, you're not pressing hard. So if you press hard, it doesn't work very well. You've got to press lightly and you can also come on the edge. Let me show you on the edge. And that gives you another bit of that. Practice doing these kind of curved and multi-directional strokes. Practice curving right and curving left and making long flows because that's really where your brush stroke is. The other thing that you want to think about is that you're going to kind of flick and remove the pressure in the brush stroke towards the end. Let me show you the fan. The fan also, I'm not going to wet the fan. The fan can be lightly damp, but you don't want it to be super wet. And I'll go ahead and grab a little of this up here because it's fluid and it's easy to go. With this, it's very similar to what we have there, but you can see it's a heavier. It's a heavier fur that you get. So you can do big areas. You can do on the flat like this on the flat or you can come on the edge. You want to definitely keep curving those strokes and notice that I'll go kind of slow motion. I sometimes twirl my brush in my fingers to get a bit of an extra flick. If I were to go heavy, I don't get a good result. So remember that you've got to press lightly when you're using these tools, especially in fur because you want what's underneath to show through. Now, finally, the fine liner. In fur, I like to, especially in very shiny fur, come in at the end and do some high reflection detail. I'm going to load just the tip of my brush. I'm going to come right here. And we're going to make little lines that are fine. And you want to practice these. Right? Little fine lines. 
little curves. How fine can you make them and how curved can you make them? Sometimes, uh, before I put it on a painting, I will like to test it just to make sure that my load and my curve on that is going to work okay. Don't let the paint get up into here on your detail brushes. It will ruin them. This is a number one round. It's a detail round. There's a lot of detail brushes. You just want the one that gives you the nice result. There we go. So those are how you get the fur brush strokes out of your brushes. Remember to wash them after every painting session. So you get all the acrylic paint out because nothing you do outside of cleaning your brushes prolongs their life more. Just don't let that paint dry on them because that's what wears them out. Next, we're going to come back and I'm going to show you how all of these techniques and concepts come together to build up the fur and help you find the flow. In step one, we're going to put in a solid color to help our fur have depth and richness. I'm going to be using the second darkest color in my mix. It got just a little bit of white to the blue and black, and I'm just painting everything out with a large synthetic brush. Just getting a solid color and then getting ready to dry. Now, step two, I'm going to want to come in and find the darkest values. And I'm going to be going into my mixture of blue and black to do that. I find the shapes and patterns of the deepest shadows in the fur and paint those shapes out. I'm also brushing out in the direction of the fur. And in this technique, I'm using a hog bright, a number 10 hog bright specifically here, being very brushy and going with the flow of the fur. Step Three, I'm going to work into our darkest kind of highlight, and I say highlight very loosely, but it's the first sheen to the fur. I'm using a hog fan because it gives us a very good initial fur technique, as we talked about in the early demo of the brushes and the tools. I am filling in the areas around the darkest shadows, creating slight highlights, a little bit of shimmer and sheen here. I'm brushing with the direction of the fur, really paying attention to whether it is flowing left or right. I'm definitely drying before the next layer. In step four, I'm gonna come back with that hog brush because it's such a great texture brush for this and continue to pull in a little shimmer and sheen. As we go through these layers, you can actually start to see how black fur is in different lighting. Like this might be as if the fur were in slightly dim or diffuse lighting where you begin to see the shape and flow. Still super critical, I have to come in and make sure that, you know, everything is blowing and moving in the way that you would expect the fur to do. Now that the basic structure is here in step five, I'm gonna take my half inch grass comb and I'm gonna come in and start to define the shape and flow and directionality of the hair with my darkest values again. I'm gonna come in to even places where I have implied highlights and pop in little elements of shadow because as you guys probably have noticed when observing your dogs, the fur can sort of split and open. I like to think of fur as a little bit like a river or something fluid because it helps me keep the mind of the flow. I'm alternating between having the brush on an angle or on a flat stroke, just depending on if I want to curve out little momentary shadows or whether they're stronger in the space. And it's really just about observing the type of lighting that your animal is in, um, how strong that lighting is or how soft that lighting is on very dark fur. Here in step six, we're going to start putting enough detail and form to the fur that you could say this is the first stage of lighting in black fur, where if it's, there is a light and it's diffused, uh, you'll start to see the shine in the black fur. I'm working my mid gray to my highlighted gray. I am still using my grass comb. I really think the grass comb is the best tool for uh, this type of technique if you can find one. You could do the whole thing with your uh, fan brush. The stuff that you've got to remember is look for the flow and form of the fur, find the highlights, find the shadows, and then find the little outliers, the unexpected highlights or the unexpected bit of fur that is catching a bit of light. 
at this staging of lighting, I would again think it would be like a diffuse day. It's not a spotlight on the animal or a direct bright light on the animal, but just general light. And that's most commonly where you'll be painting fur. And of course, we're really in the details here, really focusing on that structure. Whereas if we were painting a whole dog, we would be looking at more generalized senses of this, more of the overall shape and curve. And I just go through and keep finding curves and form. And then if I have to go back and add any shadows back, I can hit those quick. Step seven was really my favorite of all the steps, which is a funny thing to say, but it was. I'm still in the grass comb. And at this stage, I would say is 90% of the level of lighting in black fur that you will run into in most animals, in most natural and normal situations. We do take it all the way up to very bright. But here I am really shaping out the fur. I'm finding the high point of the highlights. I'm in my lighter grays now. Um, I might get a little bit into the white if I need it, but mostly that light gray will really read as a white against this dark value. And you can see me coming along with the grass comb, finding the edge of the hair, finding the little elements and piecing it out making them feel like they're little fur families. I'm definitely following the flow and direction of the fur. I uh, get on the edge of the brush where I want to make like little carved out curves. It's a lot of S strokes. It's a lot of curve strokes. And now just shading and forming the highlights. Coming in and saying, all right, there's little breaks here. And you can see me making little breaks along that curve. And also coming into the deeper areas, I think one of the important things is, is looking into the darker fur areas when there is a nice bright light that there'll be a fur or two that catches the hair. And you can see this is most, most black fur will be here. Uh, this weekend when we're painting um, the big black lab, we'll be mostly here with him. Um, but this is, a, this is definitely a furry boy that we've got going on here and we're catching all the little elements. And notice how the highlights really create the shape of fur. Last step is where we're gonna go in and pop some bright highlights. So if ever black cool fur is really brightly lit, you're gonna wanna come in and finish it with a detail brush. Now this is my tiny little detail round. And I'm gonna create defined personality in this fur making little hairs and fur families that um, are gonna come together and show the edges in their tips. I might come into a shadowed area and really pull out an individual hair. I don't have to pay every single hair, but by coming in and painting a few defined star hairs, well, like they're the superstars in the fur, maybe the light has just hit them right and the tips or edges are really sh shining. This is another place where you can kind of really show, just in fur in general, not just this type of fur, but in all fur, coming in and working little elements like this or edges creates a lot of definition and structure. Um, really make sure that the mix isn't too white. Um, if it does come back with a gray mix and get in there, you'll notice that even as I'm using fluid paint on this, and it's the fluid paint we talked about from earlier, even as I use that, I will definitely tone it down uh, with my gray. I don't wanna use pure white here. In the brightest lighting, I don't wanna use pure white at this point because it just would look like too much. So having a little bit of a tone will still read very much as white because the overall values are so dark. And you can focus little elements and little highlights. I'm gonna go through and do the whole area I kind of thought of this when I was painting this as like the area and like maybe like a Rottweiler's back or uh, a young black lab, how, you know, sometimes they get that kind of wonderful little ruffliness or wrinkliness in the fur. And I'm going to do some more of these in a series, definitely know what other types of fur that you'd want to paint because it's really fun to do studies. And I highly recommend that if you have a pet, you're going to paint, get a close up picture and paint that close up of their fur, get to know their fur on an intimate level. Because I think looking at a bunch of dogs and we're going to be doing this all bigger quest for the dogs, but looking at different dog fur, each dog almost had its own fur story. So that was interesting. <laughs> you know, 
not to be so obsessed with the fur, but I really got into it at this point in the story. Um, I'm very light on my brush brusher here, and I'm trying to make sure that these lines stay fine and hair light, and that I don't go overboard. I think it's easy to go overboard in this type of project and just like paint too many of the fine hairs. There's a weird moment where you're like, oh, I may have gotten too into it because it's so relaxing, but you can always go back and deepen or glaze it back. Hopefully you have just realized that it's really easy to paint fur. You just have to understand the concepts, the color mixes and the layers and the tools. Did you love learning about those tools? It was a lot of fun sharing with you how you can paint a very dark fur, a blue black fur with a high shine on a short coat. I mean, that's pretty specific. And the reason this tip is specific is because it's part of an amazing program called the Big Art Quest 2021, which is all about doggos. That's right. I am teaching all about how to paint the doggos, the puppers, the floofters, and the woofters. Every breed, every companion, a companion probably just like yours. So if you love dogs and you love everything dogs, be sure and hit that subscribe button and look for those big art quest videos all about dogs this weekend. We're going to be doing a black lab. Do you have a beautiful, amazing, brave, loving, supportive black lab in your life? Well, this is going to be a perfect lesson for you to be able to create a pet portrait of the one you love. If the one you love is a different type of puppers, no worry, because we're going to be covering so many kinds. Again, hit the subscribe button. Give your studio companion a big hug. And I want to see both you and your puppers at the easel real soon. Bye-bye.